Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel. Here we share beginner friendly tutorials on Scratch, Roblox, Minecraft, web programming and many more. And today we're going to create a Scratch maze game. We're going to create an easy maze game in Scratch called Save the Water. And the idea is that we have a water droplet that has to reach the cup in a certain amount of time. And we can move it around when we click the green flag. And we can solve the maze, but when we hit a wall, the water droplet will go back to the starting position. So we would have to start again. And this is the idea of the game. First of all, we're going to create a new project in Scratch. This website is available at scratch.mit.edu. And when you enter this, you're going to see a main page like that. And we're going to click the create button and create a new project. This will be um, loading for a couple of seconds, but should be very quick. OK, so we are already in the application. We have a blank project right now. We're going to delete the first sprite that is um, the default sprite that is already here because we're not going to need that for this game. So I would click the delete button and we have a completely blank project. First, we will need to create the maze. And to do this, let's go to backdrops. And when we go to backdrops, we have several tools available and we're going to choose the line to draw the maze. So we use the line exactly like in um, paint or other graphics editors. We can first make a big rectangle. Let's leave a little bit of space here. The design can be all yours, so you can easily change the position of the lines if you really want to. Remember that the space between the lines um, has to be big enough for our droplets to fit in, so don't make it too narrow. So I think that will be my maze. If we already have a backdrop like this, um, we need to add our sprites, so our characters, our players. So to do this, we need to go to um, the lower left corner. There will be a button cho called choose a sprite. Um, when you hover over it, it will become green like that, and it will say choose a sprite. And there are a couple of ways to do it, but we're going to go with the first one, so the top one and it's called Upload Sprite because we're going to upload it from images that we already have downloaded. Um, the download links for both sprites are going to be in the description for this video. So don't forget to check out the description and um, download the sprites. And also, if you like the video so far, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Um, we have a couple of videos already, so um, don't forget to check them out as well. So if we click this upload sprite, we will have a menu with our file system, basically. Um, so we're going to click the water droplet and there we, we're going to click the water cup. Choose a sprite, don't click choose the sprite, go to the top and choose upload sprite again. And this will be the water cup sprite. Good. So. So far, we have both the water cup and the water droplet, but there is one slight problem. They are very large. So we need to make them smaller. And we can do it by clicking on the size text box, deleting the size, and typing another. So for me, it's going to be 20. Okay, and right now you can move them around and as you can probably see, they both fit in. So, so far so good. And at this point, the design should be already done. So the next step will be to actually code the game. And to do this, 
we're going to go to click on the water droplet first here. We need to have it saved and here we have to have um, a drawing of the water droplet in the corner of the of the white page. That means we're assigning the code to the water droplet and we're going to create our code. So the first step would be um, coding the controls because we need to be able to move the water droplet around. And to do this, we're going to use the second event, which originally is called when space key is pressed, but we're going to change that for when arrow is pressed. So for example, when up arrow key is pressed, and then we go to motion. And for the motion, we um, change Y by 10. So we go 10 upwards, 10 pixels upwards. And then we can copy and paste it and change it to the opposite. So when down arrow key is pressed, we change Y by minus 10. And the same thing will happen with, um, with the X direction. So with going left or right, when right arrow key is pressed, we're going to change X by 10. And as you can probably imagine, when the left arrow key is pressed, we're going to change X by minus 10. So this will be our control system. And if you click your arrows on a keyboard, you will probably realize that it is already working. OK, cool. So right now we need to create a system for losing or winning the game. So let's say we lose when we hit a wall in the maze and winning will be reaching the cup of water. So we go to events and then we select when green flag is clicked. That will be the start of our game. And when the game starts, we need to go to the starting position. So we go to motion once again. And there will be a block called go to X and Y. And both X and Y are going to be numbers. So this should be the upper left corner. Let's try minus 198 and plus 122. OK, sounds about right. So we start um, not touching anything. We start in the corner. And then we will have to have a loop that goes on forever because the game, oh, it, it goes on until you win or lose. So we have a loop that goes on forever. And then we have two conditions, one for winning and one for losing. OK, so we put two if statements. And the first one would be, if we hit a wall. So there is something called a sensing panel. Um, and then we're going to use it for wall detection. But how to find the color that the wall is in? We click the color here, and then there is a, an icon at the bottom. We click it, and then we hover over our wall and it will automatically choose the color that we want. Black would be easy to choose manually, but some colors are really difficult to choose using those um, three parameters. So this is a very useful tool. OK, and then if we lose, we need to go to the starting position and start again. So the block will already remember our position, so we just drag and drop it. Go to X and Y. OK, now what will be the condition for ending if we win? It will be reaching the, uh, the water cup. So we go to sensing again, but this time we select the first, um, the first condition. So we go here and we drag and drop here. Um, and it, right now it says if touching mouse pointer, but we're not going to go with the mouse pointer. We're going to change it to water cup. So if it's touching the water cup, then we are going to say a message. So say something that indicates that we have won. So we can say, I won. And it will, it will just um, 
hover over um, the water cup and the water droplet for two seconds. And then we can say we saved water. OK, that would be um, just a simple message for us. Right now, we need to have an additional um, thing happening when we lose. Why? Because sometimes um, we will lose in a different way. So we will have to add something called a timer because we want to make the game more exciting. And you remember that there was this timing running, uh, time running out um, when we play the game at the very beginning. So we're going to create a timer for our game to make it more exciting. And the player should reach the water cup within 30 seconds. And if they don't, then we have lost the game, basically. And we're going to make the following code for the stage. So we go to the stage page, clicking on the lower right corner. And we're going to start with an event when green flag is clicked. And we will create a variable called a timer. Okay, so we set this timer to 30 at the very beginning, and then we wait one second. So we go to control, we'll wait one second, and then it goes on forever. We will change the timer by minus one. And this means it will go like 30, 29, 28, 27. And then we will wait one second again because it will have to be. It will have to depend on real seconds. Then we have again an if block. For ending everything. When timer equals zero, so we go to operators and select the equality one. So this will be that one. And then we go to variables and select the round timer one. And then we change the number to zero. And this means we have already run out of time. So if we have run out of time, then we will broadcast a message. And let's say it's going to be a new message and we name it lost okay so we broadcast that we have already lost and every other sprite will catch that message so then we are going to stop everything as well um, uh, let's go to control and let's stop the game if we have lost and then again over here we can go back to the water droplet and when we receive the lost message, so events, when I receive lost, the game should end as well. And we should also say a message. So we can say, instead of I won, we can say, oh no, um, we have wasted a droplet. OK, so this will be the message that we will see when we lose. So. This should be um, the project already completed, so this is all of the code that we're going to use um, and let's click on the green flag to start our game and see if it really works or not. OK, so you see the time is running down. And you can play and um, make the water droplets reach the cup. And if you do so, it will go back to, um, to the initial position. And if you hit the wall, it will also go back to the initial position, but this time you have lost. Um, so it's showing you a message that you have wasted a droplet. So um, that's it for today. Hope you liked this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like our videos. And you can also check out our previous videos while you're waiting for the next one. 
thank you very much for coming along and goodbye.